Welcome back to Morning Footy. Well, over the weekend, Charlie and I were able to attend the coaches' conference in Anaheim where we caught up with Seattle Reign head coach Laura Harvey, who's one of the most successful coaches in the game. Just look at this resume. She's a three-time Shield winner in NWSL, three-time coach of the year. Uh, and at Arsenal, she won the League mm -hmm. Cup, FA Cup, Continental Cup winner. Um, just a, an in incredible resume that she's put together. And we spoke with her about the outlook for Seattle this season and what the future could hold for her. Here's that conversation. Uh, well, coming off, making it to an NWSL uh, Cup final. Having lost that match, when you look back on, on last season, you know, now that you had like some months to kind of get some perspective on it, you know, what did you like about last season and where do you think that you guys uh, can see the most growth in 2024? Yeah, I think honestly, overall, I think we our performance levels weren't where we wanted them to be. I think we had to sort of grind our way to get to the final, which that, that's my third final and lost all three now that I've been in the NWSL. But I think it's the first one that I've gone to where I feel like we really had to grind to get there. So I think keeping that you know, keeping that mentality, keeping that grit to, it's a long season, be there all the way. So it doesn't really matter as long as you get there at the end. I think that's the thing to take away from it. But I think just our performance level, I think developing our youth that we have, I think we've got a, a we've spoke about the depth in our team for a long time for the last couple of years. And we had to use it last year. We're definitely going to have to use it again this year. Uh, I love the changes with the Seattle rain. Uh, yeah. Incredible. Such a good name. Such a good name. <laughs> Such a great city. Uh, what can fans expect from the rain in 2024? Yeah, I think honestly, sort of the, the rebrand is how I sort of envision the club. I think bringing back the old on the values of who we are, what the city is, bringing sort of that hard gr hardness, the grit, the determination, but also with this flair that we have to have of being the like the the gold splash in the logo you know we've got to be able to add that and I think that that's something with this team that we've always had that I think we've always had character in these special players and I think that's got to be something that we work on again this year all right um, I'm gonna address there's been some rumors your name kind of gets floated around for for a <laughs> no, lot a lot of jobs <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, you're, that's what happens when you're a very successful coach and your name gets kind of thrown out for some of these high profile positions that are coming open. The U.S. Uh, head coaching job and now Chelsea with the departure of Emma Hayes. How do you kind of how do you deal with the rumors and sort of stay focused on the, the task at hand? And also, you know, do you, what is your do you potentially have ambitions to go back to Europe? I turn my notifications off. That's the first thing that I do. Um, no, I think you know. Obviously, I'm. Always, I always say the same thing. I'm always really honoured, and um, I think you know, happy that people think that I could even be considered for those positions. I think it shows that I'm potentially doing something right. Um, but I'm committed to my job. I'm, I've always been the same way. I think that what's in front of me with the rain, I'm excited about um, a new challenge, a new season. I think you know. Going home for me is something that, you know, there'll be one day maybe where I go home. Um, obviously, the Chelsea job is something that will be an exciting proposition for somebody. So I think uh, you can always just stand there and I just smile. Like yesterday, I honestly thought something bad had happened. So I was like, what? what's happening? And I didn't realize that my name had been brought up. But I think that um, it's obviously always nice to feel like you wanted, but I think my home's in Seattle right now. You couldn't manage Arsenal and then go ch to Chelsea, no? Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> I'm a gooner. Me too, okay. I'm a gooner. So I, I look at the NWSL as... It's it's now on course to be the destination to play if if you are if you have ambition if you have quality that's the league but it feels like there are a number of leagues in Europe especially with the Champions League that makes it pretty compelling and now we're seeing some top U S women choosing to play in Europe how do you see that as competition and and trying to keep players to stay in the NWSL versus pursuing Europe yeah I think it's one, it's great for the game. I think when I first came over to the States, um, the thought of playing in the States, I think, was on 90% of any player around the world's bucket list to do. I think the Champions League has become something that is probably on a lot of players' bucket list to do now too, which is great for the game. Like that's, that's fantastic. But I think one thing you know about the NWSL, it's really difficult to play in. For me, it's like playing in the Champions League every week, and I've coached in it, so I can say that. I think that... The pace at which the games are played in this league is at, like international level, so it's hard to play here. And that's 
a really positive thing, but it's a challenging thing, I think, too. So I think leagues around the world look at the end of the and go, we've got to get more competitive within our league to try and match that. And I think for us, we've got to continue to build on the football side of what we are. Commercially and as, as brands and as markets, there's nothing like the end of sell around the world. But I think what we can do to continue to build forward is make sure that we put the right things in place to make sure the product that's on our fields is the best it can possibly be by support off the field, coaching staff, getting the players the best environments to train and giving them the best facilities to do that. It feels like we're at a real crossroads right now um, with the state of the U.S. women's national team and obviously Emma Hayes coming in and, and taking over. When you look back at the early exit in the World Cup for the U.S., do you kind of see that as, I don't know, almost a silver lining, as a, a chance to kind of hit the reset button um, and take it in a different direction? And, and if so, what, what direction do you see that program going in? Where are we at right now here? Well, I think obviously when there's disappointment, I, I think everyone reflects and says, you know, what things are we doing well, what things do we need to get, get better at? I think, if, you know, a new voice will change things for sure at the top. I think the player pool is here. I, I truly believe that. Having worked with the 20s, knowing what's coming through, even younger than that, I think there's a real depth of talent here. I think, again, I'll go back, player development in this country, youth development is a huge area that I think we need to focus on that we don't just judge the national team, the women's national team. I think we have to look at how important it is to play for the youth national teams, how important it is to play at the highest level mm -hmm. as much as you possibly can, get the best training environments, because that's what Europe are doing. That's what they've been doing for a long time. So yes, the judgment will always go on the women's national team, but it's what we do below that, that's not the fancy stuff that sells all the tickets. That's gonna be the biggest thing to continue the success of the women's team. I have a question more about your coaching philosophy and your style. I know as a coach, as a player, as a pundit, we're always looking to get better. Yeah. But where would you say your strengths lie and, and what are you looking to improve on moving forward? Yeah, I think, I think I've think i obviously gained a lot of experience in my time of coaching now. I think one of the things that I've learned along the way is you've just got to be yourself and you've got to invest in yourself in that way, both on and off the field, on the relationships you can build with people, how you treat people, which enables you to get the best relationships with those players to get the best out of them whilst also on the field, sort of the X's and O's side of the game, just evolving your knowledge and being sort of a student of the game every day. Like I watch as much as I possibly can to try and be the best coach I can be, to find little ideas and little things that can just help the players develop that 1% every day. I think that's enabled me to have a career for as long as I've had it and try and stay at the top. Who's been your role model? Uh, a lot of people are my role models. I mean, my biggest one is my dad. He was a coach, so mm. he's my biggest critic and uh, my biggest supporter. You don't have one manager in, in Europe that you're like, this is who I like to watch because I learn a lot from, maybe it's in-game management, you know, maybe not necessarily how they set up the team, but how they deal with certain pieces of adversity. I mean, being a gooner, I think for a long time, I thought Wenger was always at the mm. forefront of a lot of things that were going on in the game. <laughs> And I think, you know, Mikel's done an unbelievable job. I think, you know, being young, obviously, working with Pep, learning, I'm sure, a lot of things from him, but just little nuances on things he asks his players to do on the field, seems how he treats people off the field. I think that's a big, big area for me that, you know, you don't get to see inside the changing rooms and stuff like that, but just looking from afar on some of the things that they do on the field, I think that's uh, something that I admire from afar. And I just think that, to me, like even coming to something like this at the convention, you can learn something of who coaches the U12s, you right. know, like it, to me, it's not just the people that are at the top. Those people will have gone round and, and watched a ton of things throughout their career. We just had a, a conversation with some NBA coaches and, you know, just taking tidbits from that on how they treat people, how they manage people, how they manage their staff. So just constantly evolving on um, who I am and as a person and making sure that I just stick to my authenticity a little bit because I think that's, makes, that's my special source. <laughs> <laughs> well, Laura, all the best for 2024. You're going to you're, you're gonna get that, that championship. That's what we're I, feel for. I feel it. <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. Fourth time's a charm. Yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs>